Hi everybody, this is Lars Vermeer from Wikipedia, and welcome to volume 14 of our video series, Useful Wikipedia Tools. Today's video is about Dust Grain by Fabian Holz. Dust Grain is by far the best regraining and renoising tool for Nuke that I have ever seen, because it basically solves the regraining problem. This is the link where you can find it on Wikipedia. For those of you who are not familiar with the terms grain and noise, Grain is analog and a unique texture that is visible on film stock. Noise is digital and an unwanted signal produced by digital camera sensors. And because nowadays most of the video content is captured by digital camera sensors, we are mostly dealing with digital noise instead of analog film grain. But for the sake of this video, I will refer to noise and grain as just grain, so I don't have to name both the whole time. The quality of the regraining result that dust grain can give you depends on the quality of your degrain plate, which means if the degraining of your plate is not good, the regraining of dust grain will not give you a good result either. That is why I have created a short video tutorial about neat videos reduce noise with the help of a fellow compositor by the name of Liam Gare, who was kind enough to show me his professional approach to degraining or denoising your footage the right way. You can find this tutorial by clicking on the respective link in the description of this video. Fabian did an amazing job with dust grain because he took a very scientific approach to resolving the regraining process. He also created a detailed video in which he explains how dust grain works. To watch it, you can click on the respective link in the description of this video. I will give you a quick overview of dust grain to cover the basics. Dust grain expects you to comp your shot on the degrain plate, and it manages to leave the untouched area of your plate in its original state. Alright, so here's how it works. We'll start in the Help tab. Here we find the steps that are required to get a good result. The steps that are in bold are necessary, the others depend on your shot. And if you're ever unsure what a certain knob does, just check if it has a tooltip. We'll be going from the Analyze to the Adjust and the Replace tab. In step 1 you have to connect us grain to the right inputs. That means you need to connect it to the plate, the degrain plate, your comp and the mask for your comp. In step 2 you have to modify this luminance value if there is still luminance grain left in your degrain plate, which is also explained in the respective tooltip. In step 3 you have to click on Analyze and the Analyze tab and let dust grain analyze the grain in your plate. If you want to, you can also change the amount of frames in your shot that you want to have analyzed. In step four, you have to take a look at the response curves in the adjust tab and modify them if they're not going in a positive slope, as it says here in the description that you get when you click on this button that says, what am I looking at? In step five, you have to go to the replace tab, check this box under scatter, Choose the way you want to look at your grain with this drop down menu to help you define your noise sampling area by placing the sample box in the viewer. I will leave this set to normalized grain. The sample frame is set automatically once the sample box is moved. You can also enable the overlay to see how your sampled grain is being scattered and change the cell size of the noise pattern. If necessary, as a sixth step, you can open up the edge concealer which will give you a few more options to modify the cell pattern to get a better result. Just take a look at this help text that will tell you when you should use these settings. Now you can enable your mask input to limit the scatter to the modified elements in your comp. You can switch the scatter button off and on to see the new and scattered grain. Finally, you can also use an external grain input with a second dust grain node from another plate. But that grain output has to be set to normalized grain. After following all of these steps and switching the output back to regrain comp, I would say the resampled noise in my masked area looks pretty good to me. Now if I take a merge node, set it to difference and compare my plate to the output of dust grain, we can clearly see that the only visible difference is my masked area, which means that the rest of the plate keeps its original pixel values. If for some reason your result doesn't look as expected, try the troubleshoot button in the help tab. It'll help you to check your setup and also tell you about some general guidelines to follow. And again, if you want to know more about dust grain, 
you can take a look at Fabian's in-depth video. I really hope you can use this tool in your day-to-day -day work with Foundry's Nuke. All right, that's it for this episode of Useful Nukipedia Tools. I hope you liked it. If you have any tool suggestions, just send an email to admin at nukipedia.com. Again, my name is Lars Wemmier. Thanks for watching and goodbye, everybody.